I am from a non-profit organization called Generation. We are a global organization. We're in about 17 countries now. And you can see the kind of countries that we're in. Anything in green is a new country to us this year. Um, I and my colleagues here work for the UK and Ireland branch. And within the UK and Ireland, we have bases in six different regions around those countries. We started in 2015, so we're still relatively new. Um, we started in the US and we started in the UK and Ireland in about 2019. And since then in the UK and Ireland, we've trained over uh, 1,200 people into amazing life-changing opportunities and jobs. Um, so as I said before, what we do is we offer free skills boot camps that lead to employment. So we are a little bit different from lots of other training providers in that sense, that we're not just offering training, although that is incredibly important. We then also connect you with employers who are working with us and want to diversify the people coming into their organization, want to do good by the communities um, that they work in and they serve, and want to partner with us because they know we can help them get some really well-trained, talented people um, from a diverse range of backgrounds into their organization. So that's why they work with us. So globally then, 288 cities in 17 countries, which is pretty impressive. 72,000 people worldwide have now completed a generation program. Um, that varies by country. As I said, in the UK, we've, we've trained about 1,200 of those because we're still pretty new. We're pretty young in the UK. Around the world, we work with about 5,000 or so different employers. And these range from big kind of uh, household names that you would know down to uh, sort of your local businesses, small and medium-sized enterprises who recognize the value in what we do at Generation and want to kind of bring on some Generation graduates. When I say the word graduates, I'm talking about Generation graduates, so people who have done a boot camp with Generation, not necessarily people who have been to university. And then this is the stat that I really love. So of the people we trained last year in 2022, 75% of them have gone from unemployed or in very unstable employment to being in fantastic long-term sustainable careers and that number will grow so we have some programs that are only finished right at the end of last year and we're still working on getting them into employment so that number is definitely going to grow at the moment it's about 75 percent and then lastly this is a really nice stat to be able to share so we also track how um, much income uplift so how financially stable and comfortable and confident our graduates feel after doing a generation program and after they've gotten into work so on average our generation graduates see a three to four times increase in their annual salaries before and after they've done a generation program. And we also ask them questions such as, do you feel comfortable financially? Do you feel comfortable paying your bills? Can you afford your household items? And we track that metric as well. So it's really cool to kind of see these kind of stats that I can share with you. So it is genuinely quite life changing. And I think that's why you know, that's why we all love working at Generation. It's, what, it's why our graduates love um, what we do at Generation and you'll get to hear from a couple of our graduates a little bit later on today. So we do a range of different skills programs. Pardon me, one second. I did have a strepsil before I did this but we might struggle still slightly. So we do a range of different boot camps, predominantly tech boot camps. We do a couple that are not tech. We do one in healthcare and one in green jobs, like a green energy kind of program. Um, but today, of course, you're here to talk about tech and you're interested predominantly in tech. So these are the existing tech programs that we have. These run across the different regions that we're based out of in the UK and Ireland. So that is London, that is Greater Manchester, Yorkshire, Birmingham in the West Midlands, uh, Dublin and some of the rest of Ireland and then Edinburgh and Glasgow in Scotland. So they're our bases and they're where we draw learners from. Um, so if you're based in one of those regions um, and you're interested in one of these programs, it's very likely that one of the, at least one of these programs is going to be running in your region this year. They run multiple times a year. So if you happen to miss a deadline for one or you're not successful in one, you typically do have um, another opportunity later in the year to apply for another boot camp. So hopefully, looking at some of these names now, and after Ollie's talk, you have a slightly better idea of what some of these words mean, because some of these words might be a little bit less familiar to you if you're not kind of immersed in tech every day. So we have two different types of cloud programs, so Google Cloud and Amazon Cloud. AWS here stands for Amazon Web Services. And then we have an IT support program, although it's got a slight twist to it, because it's IT support with cybersecurity. Ollie was talking a lot there about the risk of hacking uh, and the, import the growing importance of cybersecurity. So we've added that into our IT support program. And then we have two others here that are more to do with data. So data engineering, which is a lot about kind of software and building stuff. And then data analyst, which um, you were doing a bit of work on with Ollie, looking at the census data a little bit earlier today. 
So who do we work with? Where do our graduates work? Uh, it'd be impossible to fit all of the different employers um, that we work with onto one slide. That would be a very unattractive slide. But these are some of the names that uh, we work with and who have actually hired people from Generation, who've done Generation programmes. So as I mentioned earlier, there should be some names on there that are familiar to you. They're pretty household names, some big ones such as... I mean, I'm very familiar with Just Eat, put it that way. That's definitely a household name in my household. Um, but also places like Sainsbury's and Depop and BP, River Island. And then some that might, you might be slightly less familiar with. But I think the reason I picked these ones to showcase is that there's a whole variety. So I think one of the lessons that I learned, I think, working at Generation and working with our graduates is that just because you've done a tech program and you're a tech specialist doesn't actually mean you end up working in a tech organisation such as Microsoft or Google. That is one option, and it's a fantastic, incredible option. But there's lots of companies here that are not, they wouldn't necessarily characterise themselves as tech, tech organisations, but do have uh, lots of vacancies and lots of need for people with tech skills or data skills or digital skills. So if the idea of working in a tech organisation doesn't appeal to you, you can still become a tech specialist in a wide range of different sectors as well. And then, as I said, there's another couple of hundred that across the UK and Ireland that I wasn't able to fit onto the screen. Um, but they are there, rest assured. So what does a bootcamp experience actually feel like? So it's a bit unique, it's a bit different. It's not sort of log on for a couple of hours a day and kind of play around with a bit of data and then log off. They are quite intensive and we're quite unapologetic about the fact that they are intensive. They are designed to make you feel a bit like you're in employment already. Because we're not just teaching you the technical skills that you need to do the jobs that you're going on to. We're also teaching you what it's like to be in a workplace and what it's like to be in a particular sector or the sector that you applied for. So they're quite long, 9am 9, 9 to 5pm most days, so they are quite intensive. And as I said, we make no apology for that. They last between 5 and 12 weeks, depending on which programme you are enrolled on. Typically, the tech programmes tend to be the longer ones, just simply because there's more content to cover, there's more stuff to train you up on. Healthcare um, and IT support are typically the, the shorter ones. Uh, but some of our data programmes, they're typically the 10 to 12 week programmes. Everything is remote. Everything is done online. So you can be sitting in your own home or sitting in a library or a cafe or whatever it might be, uh, learning and doing your boot camp remotely. Should you need laptop and Wi-Fi, we can provide that. What we're trying to make sure is that there is as few barriers as possible for you succeeding on a programme like ours. So if you do need laptop, if you do need Wi-Fi, if you need an appropriate place to work because maybe home is not that quiet or you just don't have a study space at home, a lot of us don't in London particularly, um, you can let us know and we will typically be able to organise um, a working space for you somewhere um, in your region. Um, it's very much built from real life scenarios. So we're trying to immerse you in the kind of roles and the language you'll be using and uh, the way you'll be working in the sector from day one. So it's very interactive because of that. So although you are sat at home, it is not isolating. So we have a policy of cameras on. Everyone in your classroom of 25 people will have their cameras on. You'll have a lot of interaction, lots of opportunities to do pair work, group work, um, talk to your peers. Um, Jeremy earlier mentioned how this, could, this room could be your first professional network. So can your generation classroom. So we often say to our generation classes, like this classroom of 25 people, that's your first network. These are going to be your allies. Um, to borrow Jeremy's term, these are going to be your allies when you go further and uh, on into your career. These are going to be people, be people that you can lean on for support and ask questions to. So people do genuinely make really good friends from their classrooms. We typically do keep the boot camps quite small. We typically don't exceed 25, 26 people on a boot camp so that you do get... Um, a much higher ratio of attention from the instructor and you get to know each other on the boot camp really well. As I said earlier, you'll learn technical content, but there's lots of soft skills involved as well. And we're going to show you a little bit about what that looks like in a second. We're really big on not just teaching you how to do the job that you're going into. We're really big on teaching you perseverance and resilience and kind of grit and drive and what we call growth mindset which is all about how you react when things don't quite go your way and there's a combination of different types of study we know not everyone learns the same or learns in the same way so that while there's lots of interaction and lots of role plays and lots of group work there's also opportunity for kind of individual study as well 
Um, and then lastly, we use lots of different tools for you to be able to communicate. So there's lots of ways to communicate with each other outside of the classroom, to communicate with us outside the classroom, your instructor and your mentor. Um, and you'll actually be trained up on using various different pieces of software to be able to do that. So great as communication tools, but you're also just getting a bit of extra training in how to use different types of software. So Slack is one of those. Um, that we use, which is just a messaging platform. Teams is also available for anyone who works at Microsoft in the room. So you have Microsoft Teams is also available, as well as um, you know other other types of programs and softwares. But this hopefully gives you a little bit of an idea, and it's very difficult to give you a full idea without you kind of being in the classroom. But a little bit of an idea about what this could be like if you were to embark on a boot camp experience. So this is kind of what it looks like. This is what your classroom will look like. So 25 or so of you, you'll have an instructor in the room as well, in the virtual room. And then you'll be able to see everyone else in your class and get to know each other really well. And then this is an example of a Slack screenshot where you'll be chatting to each other. And you don't just have to chat about the work. There's lots of different channels down here with lots of different uh, themes to them. So we have like a random chat channel or like channels for different interests where you can just chat about your interests with other people um, in your class and in other classes as well. Um, and you can just chat to generation staff about whatever it is that's on your mind too. So what are you going to learn on a boot camp? So we've split this into three areas. So technical skills will vary depending on which program you have picked. So technical skills are the building blocks that you need in order to be able to, in order to, be able to do the job that you are hoping to get after you do your boot camp. So um, if you're doing data analytics, then that could involve learning how to use Power BI, which is a data analysis, data visualization tool. Um, if it's IT and support and cybersecurity, there could be a customer service module in there. So the technical skills part will vary depending on the program, but that's the kind of building block of the boot camp. So the very basic bit is we're going to teach you how to do the job that you're going to go on to. Other than that, though, we then talk about our generation mindset. So I mentioned growth mindset earlier, and I think I mentioned persistence as well, or perseverance. So these are the things that we think you're going to need to be a sort of a modern day um, standout, fantastic colleague in the workplace. So Jeremy touched on these a little bit earlier in her in her keynote speech um, about how it's all about how you kind of pick yourself up again or how much drive you have and how that can make you stand out from other people um, that you're working with or potentially competing against as well. So we're going to be really big on things like growth mindset and teaching you persistence and resilience. Um, as well as personal responsibility and future orientation as well. And then lastly, then, there's behavioural skills. So these, I suppose, are what you might hear called soft skills. Although in my mind, there's nothing really that soft about them. They are crucial. Nobody wants to work with someone in the workplace who only has technical skills, who is like, good at the job, but just a bit of a... How can I put this nicely? An idi idiot to be around, let's say that. And not a very nice person to be around. So... We're also going to teach you these soft skills that are going to make you just an all-round um, outstanding colleague in the workplace. So communication, incredibly underrated as a skill. So there's going to be a lot of focus on that. Teamwork as well. And things like stress management, because we're not going to be on the boot camp and pretend to you that work is always fun <laughs> or you always wake up with bags of motivation, as Jeremy said. It's not always going to be like that. So being able to have that growth mindset, have that persistence, as well as know how to deal with it and cope and have some tools to use when things do get a bit stressful is really important. So what we're trying to produce are really well-rounded people. We're not trying to produce robots who are really good at the job but not anything else. We want you to be really well-rounded people when you leave Generation and go into the workplace. And to do that, we give you lots and lots of support. So I mentioned the term instructor already. So you will get an expert instructor in your field who will be in the classroom with you and they will be leading the class. But each classroom also has a dedicated mentor that you will meet one-to-one -one on a regular basis during your programme. And the reason we do that, very simply, is that we know that life happens sometimes. Stuff happens in life and you might wake up one day and you think, something really uh, uh, stressful has happened in my life. I'm really not in the mood to do Generation today or I need a bit more support this week to be able to actually apply that persistence and growth mindset that we've been talking about. So that's what your mentor's there for. Your mentor is there for anything that is not the technical skills bit, the academic bit. They're there to support you pastorally through the programme. So there's uh, three, or well we would split this into three different types of support. So pre-programme, on-programme and post-programme. So pre-programme, you will have a chat with your mentor, a discussion with your mentor and set some goals for yourself. 
and they'll work with you to understand what those kind of goals would be and what are the best goals for you. And they'll also chat to you about what your personal circumstances are. Um, not to judge you or not to say you shouldn't be doing this, but just to make sure that they understand what your circumstances are so they can support you to the best of their ability. It doesn't even have to be sort of negative things. It could be, I've got a two-year-old running around at home. Sometimes I might need to step away from the computer to kind of take care of my child, stuff like that. And then on the program, you'll have these dedicated one-to-one -one sessions. They'll be holding you accountable to your goals, so they'll be supporting you to meet those goals. So we don't just set the goals at the start and then forget about them. They're going to be kind of keeping you honest, keeping you accountable for those goals during the program. Um, and they'll start, sort of halfway through the program, they'll start talking to you about employment readiness. So the last few weeks of the program, in addition to the technical skills and the soft skills, You'll also then meet our partnerships team, who are the ones who work with employers to get you a job at the end. And they will start talking to you about things like CVs and cover letters and mock interviews, and you'll start being trained up on that as well. So really, really well wound the picture, and your mentor will support that process. And then your post-program team, your mentor then, will start supporting you when you start going for interviews. So we give you support for six months after the generation program finishes. So we don't want to just sort of train you wave off wave you off into the sunset and go right off you go bye bye not our problem anymore that's not how we like to work so you get support for up to six months after the program um, and that includes support when you're going for interviews support when you're making applications we're sort of there sort of like holding your hand every step of the way if you like and then just a little bit more then on how you'll be supported so these are some of the common questions that we get from um, potential applicants so things like what if I get ill so we have a buddy system to help you so we'll pair you up with someone else on course so if you need to catch up you can do that materials are always online this is why we use lots of pieces of software so if you do have to miss anything uh, obviously we prefer you not to but life happens people get ill you can access um, the material what financial support is available so as a non-profit organization unfortunately as much as we would love to we can't pay you to do the program um, we can't kind of financially fund you through it. However, if you are someone who does receive any sort of benefit, government benefits like universal credit, you are able to continue receiving that through the programme. We have that um, in place with uh, the Job Centre system that allows you to do that. We don't want anyone to be any more unduly burdened financially by doing our programme, and you are able to keep receiving those benefits throughout the programme. And as mentioned before, we can provide laptops and Wi-Fi and a place to work should you need it. And then what happens if you don't get a place in the programme? So some of our programmes are quite popular. They are a little bit oversubscribed. And we do our best to make really um, robust and fair decisions about who gets a place on the programme. Um, and I can talk to you individually a little bit later if you have any particular questions about how we do that. But we always give you further opportunities. So either with Generation or we have a whole network of different providers who do different sorts of things um, in the same kind of training space as we are in. And we will signpost you to different opportunities that you might be interested in. We won't just say no and then wave you off. It will be uh, not at this part time or not right now. And here's some other opportunities that you might be interested in too. Okay. And then lastly then, eligibility and next steps. So pardon me one second. <laughs> okay. Um, as a not-for-profit organisation, we work with funders to be able to provide the programmes that we put on, um, and that comes with some eligibility criteria. So it varies slightly by course, so please always check the website before you apply, but these are the basic criteria for all courses. So you do need to be aged over 18. You do need to be not in education, employment or training. So this is a really crucial one. We are funded to work with unemployed people or people on zero-hour contracts. If you are currently studying at university or college, you wouldn't be eligible at this time. That's not to say you won't be after you finish studying, but not while you're studying. You must have the right to work in the UK. So this is really, really crucial because we're not just a training provider. We're not for people who just want to come and do a training course. You need to be in a position and have the desire to then step into a job afterwards. Sometimes it might take us a couple of... Oh, I'll come to questions again. Sometimes it might take us a couple of months to get you a job. Sometimes it might take us a week. So you need to be ready to kind of step into that role or step into that organisation quickly after, um, after the programme. So as long as you have the right to work in the UK, you're good to go. That could be on a visa. You don't have to be a natural born citizen of the UK. We'll assess that on a case by case basis. You do need to be available for the duration of the programme. So if you happen to have a, a magical 
three week long holiday booked in Italy, sort of midway through the program. How lovely does that sound right now? Um, that is going to be a hindrance to you doing the full program, particularly if the program is only nine or 10 weeks long. So do have a think about your availability when you look at the dates of the programs on the website. And as I mentioned before, ready to step into a job, um, potentially quite quickly after the program. And then lastly here, this is not so much an eligibility criteria, but just uh, something I want to call out and want to shout out is that we're not looking for any previous qualifications or experience. Um, we're not necessarily looking for people with university degrees or people who have worked in the industry a long time. In essence, we're looking for the opposite of that. We're looking to get people into these industries who haven't got any experience. That's not to say if you're a university graduate, you can't do one of our courses. You absolutely can. But we're also trying to make sure that we're reaching out to people who haven't had the same opportunities as someone who maybe has been able to go to university um, or has had lots of professional work experience in their, in their past. So please don't be put off if you don't have qualification or experience. You might be exactly the type of person we're looking for. As long as you have the motivation and the enthusiasm and the commitment for the programme, and the drive, as you heard about earlier, you could potentially be a perfect fit for the program. Um, and as I said, just one more reminder, there are a couple of course specific requirements as well, just based on who funds us around the UK. So do always check the website first. So I think that then brings me to, yeah, the last bit here. So next steps today, if you're in the room or if you're online joining us, if you're in the room, come and find us at the end of the day. Please come and speak to one of us about what you might be interested in um, and how you can find out more. If you're online, have a look on our website. Please get in touch with us um, using the live stream or by email or via our social media channels. Um, and we'll be more than, more, more than happy to help you. All of the programs that are currently open for applications are listed on our website, so you can have a look at that as well. Um, and we also have a really handy eligibility checker tool on the website, so you can put in your personal details and it will only show you the courses um, and the regions that you would be eligible for. So you don't have to do the legwork. The, some clever tech person who maybe has done a tech boot camp has then built this tool for us, so you don't have to do that work. So you can put in your details and we'll tell you what you'll be eligible for. Okay. But thank you for listening, and I hope that has at least piqued your interest in boot camps as a potential route. It's not the only route. We're not here to say you must come and do a boot camp. There are lots and lots of other different routes, um, and Ollie would be a great person to speak to if you are interested in getting to tech, but maybe the boot camp option isn't quite for you because she's an expert in all the other different routes into tech that you could take. Okay, so thank you for listening. We're going to do a quick changeover now. So you've got a minute or two just to stretch your legs. And then when we come back, we're going to be introducing you to our wonderful panel and you'll be able to ask them some questions. Okay, thank you very much.